All right. So, as you see, I just launched into the new World of Tanks and crew books. We get crew books. Yay! What else happened? Hmm. So the crew books are an interesting new part of the game. And as you saw, you get 11 off the start when you launch the new uh, update. And that's because we have 11 countries that have tanks in the game. So to start with, everybody will be able to train a tank crew in one of your tanks for each one of the countries. So how do you use it? Simple, you go up to this little crew operations uh, icon here, click on that and come down and you'll see crew books. Open it up and you got your different books. There's the training booklet, the training guide. Both of these come through your rewards of merit that we are now getting. So it's yet another goodie you can get. Then there's the training manual, 250,000 experience for each crew member, really big. Uh, that one you can actually purchase with credits uh, at different times throughout the game as a reward uh, then there's also finally the last one the real big one the personal training manual uh, the book provides a crew member with 850,000 experience I mean wow so and that one is a reward for in-game uh, features you know events things that happen I'm not sure exactly but maybe like the marathons uh, the on tracks those kind of things. Don't hold me to that. You know, it's up to working to decide what events, but those are examples of events that have happened. So anyways, uh, we have a training booklet. So let's just say we want to pick it here. And with 20,000, it shows, let's just get, uh, how can I cancel that? Oh, well, I just wanted to show you what it was before. Uh, so it's going to basically train them all up a bit for 20,000 and then you just click on that and you click apply if that's what you want. If you say, well, no, okay, I don't want to use the charioteer. I want to maybe put that on one of my other uh, English vehicles. Then, I don't know, let's say the Cromwell B. Uh, oh, wait a minute. He doesn't. Let's go down here to the medium, the medium three. Same thing. We go down here, we pick open, and it shows where everybody is already. You click on this, and oh, and the crew did not meet the requirements, so we can't put it on there. Now, why is that? Oh, because the tier level, I believe it's because it's going to be from a higher tier. Um, then, really, the other key thing that happened in this uh, patch is um, the, the changes the updates to several medium vehicles and the STA, uh, let's see, the Leopard, those all uh, received quite a bonus, quite a buff. And uh, let's see here, we'll go down to two, right here. And this is gonna talk a bit about it. I gotta say, it's pretty funny that they brought out their talk about all the buffs they were gonna do. The buffs and the nerf, so to say, uh, the nerf of the Russian tanks and the buffs to the Leopard and to the, uh, the Japanese medium. And of course, we all know that they decided to change their mind on that. And now what we've got is we got the buffs, but we don't get the nerfs. So I guess this is a Wargaming's way of making everybody happy. Keeping all those with the Russian tanks happy by not touching their tanks and making those who have either the Japanese or the German medium lines happy. And it's really obvious. It's basically what I reviewed the changes, or at least the proposed changes, and I had talked about how one's going to be, one tank is going to be a brawler now and the other tank that we're talking about here uh, is going to be a ranged uh, sniper, uh, back brought back to its glory days as it once was, so to say. And that's exactly what's happened here. So let's just take a listen. Changed. They are the German Indian Panzer, Leopard Prototype A and Leopard 1. 
and the high and top tier Japanese tanks STA-1, Type 61, and STB-1. These changes were made to emphasize the role of these vehicles in battle, add more individuality, and make their main traits more distinct. The medium tanks of the Leopard branch are now better suited for playing long range in the role of a fast sniper. Just like this they should be. This is how the Leopard 1 was changed, for example. Its maximum speed and turret traverse speed improved, while the hull traverse speed and durability decreased slightly. But the main changes were made to its gun. The damage per shot is now higher. 420 hit points using a standard shell. Its damage per minute remains the same, well, but penetration. penetration increased. The penetration of an HE shell almost doubled from 53 millimeters to 105 oh, millimeters. Yeah. The gun now aims faster, its stabilization improved, and dispersion decreased. Now the gun is the most accurate among all medium tanks in the game. The Leopard 1 became a pronounced sniper. It's dangerous at a distance, but vulnerable in close combat. The Leopard Prototype A and Indian Panza underwent similar changes. Various parameters were fine and tier nine. The main changes were made to their gun's characteristics. Regarding the Japanese medium tanks, their adjusted parameters improved their abilities at close to Alright. Let me just say there, sorry, I missed stuff a little bit on my pausing skills, but uh is that not awesome? That's freaking awesome, guys. I'm so happy that they've done this. I'm getting, I'm going up the German tree to get me the leopard. I, I, when I first started playing war gaming, I was all about German tanks. And I guess about year two or year three, I started thinking about going up. I went all the way up to the Indian, which I hated. Oh my God, that tank sucks for me. But anyways, teach their own. Um, and then there was rumblings in, in, in the forums about how bad the leopard was. And how they had done stuff, something had happened to it, and you know, and it wasn't as good. It was already the that was the beginning of the rumbles, and at the time, uh, the waffle E one hundred was you know an issue, and I got that. And to be honest, I think I just decided not to. I decided to go somewhere else instead of going up the medium line. I wasn't happy with the Indian, and from all the rumbles that I heard, I decided you know forget it. This just Let's just do something else. But this is the reason why I wanted to play it. This is what it was known as. was like a wicked sniper. It was feared in the game. And I'm so happy that they brought it back. And now we're going to talk about the Japanese tanks. And again, they've completely made it into the brawler now. It's got the Hydrodamax suspension. It's got really great gun depression. It's mantle. It's, well, I'll shut up. Just watch. Mid-range combat. The STA-1's top gun is less accurate, but now it aims and reloads faster. The Type 61 became better armored and more durable. Its damage per shot decreased, but its reload time and aiming time improved. The STB-1 changed most significantly. Its turret front became thicker, and the weak spots in the gun mantlet disappeared. The mantlet itself is also thicker. Another addition will help the STB-1 play from a hull down position. The tank See? received a hydro-pneumatic suspension. Now it can incline its hull and increase the gun depression angle up to as much as 12 degrees. So they're totally selling this as now as a brawler. You know, they've, they've made, they beefed up the armor in the front of the mantle, which was an issue before. They gave it the hydrochromatic suspension, even though it already has really good uh, depression. So now with the combination of that, the ridge lines on this thing are just going to be hilarious. Uh, I think this actually might even have an advantage over the UDES, but we'll see. The suspension works automatically, just like for one of the high and top tier Swedish medium tanks. Other gun parameters were revamped. Its damage per shot decreased, but stabilization is better now. The rate of fire increased along with damage per minute. Now the tank has one of the highest damage per minute parameters. There you go. The STB-1 can confidently play on uneven terrain using its excellent gun depression angles. Its well-armored exactly. turret can withstand hits and help deliver high damage per minute. You can find the full list of changes and precise right. values of revised parameters for and each then on top of that, there's the Leopard the 1 and STB-1 branches on our website. Additionally, the characteristics of yeah. several premium vehicles were altered. The Japanese STA-2 now has more armor in its gun mantlet. Its engine power increased. The reverse speed grew by 3 kilometers per hour. All types of STA-2 shells now travel faster. 
heat and HE shells are 16% faster, and armor-piercing shells 34% faster. 34. The Panza 58 Mutz and its counterparts gained 50 more hit points. Its gun improved, and accuracy increased. All types of shells now have better velocity and damage per shot. The armor penetration of HE shells doubled. So you see what they're saying here, right, guys, is with the... Uh the German medium here, they're making, air, you notice all the velocity is going up, up, up. The penetration is going up. Uh, that's right there. Again, they're trying to, they're trying to direct you like into the, the mode of sniper, you know, long distance sniper. Shells are going to get there faster. There's more penetration involved. So it's more of a beauty when it comes to being a sniper tank. And it's now 90 millimeters instead of 45 millimeters. I'm all for that's it. That's it about the vehicles. Right, and then we get back to the um, the books that we were talking about. There's also, uh, they brought back Kharkov, which is a map. Uh, there used to be a, a city that was pretty small, but um, I actually enjoyed it. But they brought it back, and now it's a larger map, uh, much larger. There's a, There used to be a little bit on the outskirts of the city. There would be, you know, this little bit of land where you could go up and down or whatever. And... Uh, now what they've done is they've basically blown that all the way out, so there's a large amount of it. Uh, the other thing is session statistics, guys. Um, I haven't played a game right now, but if you do, it tracks you, and it also gives you all these different options of how you want to track it. So there's zero uh, games played. As you play games, you're going to see your number go up, you know, forever. Uh, you, can, you get your credits, how much you make, your combat experience, free XP, the bonds, total credits, battle performance... You know, you got everything going on here. Gives you all the statistics, and you can reset it at any time. So if you decide, well, hey, I want to play heavies, and I want to see which tank I get the best stats in, you can just play like, you know, 15 games in a row just using your heavies, gather all your statistics that you want from it, and then hit the reset and do the same thing with TDs or whatever it is that you want to do, however you want to, uh, you know, set it up. You can do it by battles, you can do it by just particular vehicles. So if you don't do the reset and you play like a thousand games, you're gonna be able to see by vehicle what you're doing and you know which ones you're better in or performing better in, that kind of thing. Um, but also it will give you a link to the Hall of Fame directly from that. Now, of course, I have no games right now in this, so it's not really gonna give me much of anything. Um, other than it's going to say, you, you got no statistics over the day. There you go. But you can see here, this this the, the Hall of Fame here. See where you are. Uh, World of Tanks rating 6,472, and there's only 9,000. That means you suck. No, actually, it doesn't. It's, as you see here, it says you're scoring higher than 84% of the players. Uh, and victories... And it's actually kind of cool, so you can see where you stand in, in the whole thing. And they've really been working on this a lot. This is just for my achievements. You got you and your friends. Uh, you, I don't have a clan, so this is going to, but you would show up, or sorry, if you're in a clan, this is going to show up for you, showing all your clan mates. And then best players, like those that are the, the top. So with, with victories right now, wall hacks, world attacks rating, uh, X. VM numero uno. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Wait, uh, at least you just, you know, you live up to it. That's funny. Uh, average experience earning. La da 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 da. All that stuff. Um, oh, Dark Ninja. Anyways, uh, so you got all your information there. And that the cool thing, though, is the fact that this is just located right here and it's all tied in. So you got your comparison. You've got your normal announcements and you know any gifts or anything like that sent your way, blah blah blah. And then this is now in the middle. So I I think this is sweet. I'm really hyped about this because I like having stats. I that's why I have uh, with the mod pack that I I use <laughs> very little out of the mod pack. Do I use guys? I uh, use one for in here so that you notice this is the IS3A. I just played this tank yesterday and it had equipment on it. It had a skin on it, the the skin with uh, the bow tie, which is baddies. There you go. There we go. 
You might remember me playing this one yesterday and it looked like this. I call it the lobster present because there's all these lobsters on there. I don't know why there's lobster, but anyways. So, you know, like I said, I had camo, uh, the camo skin. I had all the, the stuff on it, my ammo. Like, look, now if you go in here, I don't even have, you know, my repair kit, first aid, or fire extinguisher. All that's been changed because the, the mod automatically does everything for you. It automatically swaps uh, different equipment from one tank to another. And then when you're in game, uh, up and around this part of my screen, as you'll see if you watch any of my streams, uh, you'll see that I always have my win aid efficiency and credit and damage. Or not damage, sorry, credit, because damage would be beside them down here. Uh, so, and the reason why I do that, people say, well, I thought you didn't care about win aid. So why do you have win aid on your screen? Well, you're right. I don't really care about win aid as a player. I'm not saying that is bad. Please, 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 stop yelling at me. Uh, some some of you guys stop yelling at me that I hate XBM and that I think uh, win aid is bad. That's not the case at all. I think when, when XBM is simply a mod. You can use it. It doesn't make people bad. Toxic people are already toxic. You don't add a mod and all of a sudden. <laughs> turn into some freaking toxic player or something. That just doesn't happen. You're either a toxic player or you're not. The mod has nothing to do with it. Does it help toxic players? Whatever. I, I, can, I can get stats by going Alt-Tab in like one minute, you know? Like so during a game, I can easily find your stats if I want to. I, I don't have to have XVM. I can see everything in it in a matter of seconds. So uh, it's really nothing. And But the reason why I do have those numbers up there for the win eight is so I can show people uh, that doubt the things that I'm saying. Meaning, if I'm streaming and I'm talking to a new player who's asked questions about how should I scout, and they bring up, with, well, with scouting, if I scout passively, my win eight numbers are going to go down, and that's going to suffer. And what I'm, what I'm able to do is able to have a play a game in one of my scouts, uh, you know, like the the T52 or whatever. Uh, and, and, and be playing a game and totally be passive at the beginning. Find a spot to overlook everyone and just spot them, spot them, spot them, spot them so the team is doing damage. And then, you know, midway, when the, when the tanks are, uh, some of the tanks are killed off and you got a shot, you're double bushed or whatever, boom, you get some damage that way. Then at the end, you're zooming in and wrapping up, killing the already or killing all the stragglers back at the base that are all like half damaged anyways. But, and you're just adding damage, damage, damage. And I, you know, will show them. I got blue and purple numbers up there, and I can just, you know, go like, hey, guys, right here. That's why I have it. And those are the only mods that I use are the XVM in-game and the, the crew uh, swap and the equipment swap here in the garage. And that's it. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, to playing now. I'm going to end this video so that I can upload it and get everything going and jump into the game. I'm really curious about, uh, you know, what will be the drop rates of these books. As uh, I remember, I made the video when they first brought out blueprints and I found that I was averaging them uh, between one in every five games to one in every seven games, depending on uh, what, it really came down to what kind of tank I was playing. I found uh, with the lights, I wasn't getting them as much. Go figure, if you're a passive scout and you spot for the team, you don't get rewarded as much. I, I really wish X, I really wish uh, Wargaming would change that, uh, but whatever. I don't think they're going to be doing that anytime soon. Uh, so with this one here, let's find out how often we get these books, and um, we'll wait and see uh, what the first in-game event is going to be that's going to reward us with one of these 850,000 experience books. That would be pretty hilarious. I mean, you could... Uh, you could take a, a maybe a new tanker uh, on one of your new tanks, maybe a commander for a new tank, and just get him trained up right away with it. Or you can use 850 to add to, you know, if you're going for your fifth or sixth skill on a tank, that will definitely help too because it takes so much. Um, but that's about it. New map. Up, uh, uh, definitely they've uh, they've buffed, you know, the leopard line, the Japanese medium line. Uh, the 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 Panzer Mutts, <laughs> I call it, I was about to say the Mutt because that's what I always call it, um, and then the books 
<clears throat> excuse me. And then the stats, uh, in-game stats in your garage. Those are the main things that have happened in 1.51. And I hope you all enjoy it. If you have any questions on anything, of course, leave a question uh, or a comment. Either way, if you like it, please give it the thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And if you are new and you want to know when my videos are uh, uploaded, just click on the subscribe and then click on the notifications and you'll be notified every single time that a new video comes out. So guys, uh, I hope you like it. I hope there's not too many, but uh, either way, I'm here just to give some information and I hope it helps. Don't forget my, uh, my Twitch streams, guys. I'm there quite often, almost nightly, and it's been very helpful for new players. I'm getting a lot of good, great feedback on this. Uh, I get messages all the time. Uh, just saying, hey man, you totally, I totally watched what you did on, uh, like for example, it seems like the most popular ones are how to snipe without getting spotted, how to, which means how to double bush, how to side scrape. Uh, it's a lot of it is between the scouting and the TDs I find seems to be the most issues. And then of course a lot of questions when it comes to mediums and heavies, it tends to be a lot of questions about like how to angle and whatnot. Uh, but I've had like a bunch of guys uh, sending me uh, messages simply saying, hey man, thanks for showing me what you did. And uh, I've been doing it now for like X amount of days or whatever and it's really helped out. And uh, you know, uh, this, one, this one message, maybe I should keep them and, and put them up in the video so that it, with the person, player's name. But I don't know if I should, legally or whatever, I should be doing that yet. Uh, I'll have to look at that. But anyways, one of them was really nice. One of them was simply saying, uh, that the the person, the player, had a terrible time sniping, was always getting lit, just didn't understand the whole ring, using your, your rings, using the bushes for double, had no idea what double bushing meant. Uh, we got a good laugh out of it in the stream uh, when we were explaining what it meant and what they thought it meant. And uh, so I went out and I did a whole bunch of double bushing in, in, in both my lights and, uh, and TDs and uh, a few like a week later, I got a I got a message from him saying, "Hey man, I've been doing it straight for the last few days, and I've gone from getting lit like you know twice in the game to I haven't been lit now in like over three days." So that to me was that's why that's what makes me happy. That's why I'm doing this is when I I, I can see a result from what I'm doing. I'm simply trying to get info out there to new players so that they can get better because if if all the new players start getting it and it starts clicking for them, they're gonna stay. The game itself is wicked. It looks beautiful, the graphics are freaking nuts. The mechanics of it are pretty realistic. Uh, you take, just like in real life, it's always good to take high ground, that kind of thing. There's other games out there which are just complete BS when it comes to mechanics. And that's what's good about this game. Uh, the community sometimes sounds toxic in game, but the reality is it's not. It's pretty damn good community. Um, check out the streams and you'll notice that right away. A real good uh, community of people out there that play the game and watch the game. So if you do have any questions, guys, come on over to the Twitch stream, Mr. Beetlebum. It's that simple. So between the videos here on YouTube and the streams on Twitch, I hope I can help some people. So if you know anybody who's new, tell them to come on over and uh, look me up. All right, guys, that's it. I appreciate your time. I hope you're having a great day. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Have fun. Get out there and kill some red tanks, man. Let's have a blast. Hope to see you out on the battlefield. If uh, you do see me, give me a 07 and uh, see what we can do. Let's do some damage. All right, guys. You take her easy. We'll see you the next time. Cheers.